asked because he wants me. Each one wants me less, perhaps, than does a child in the first grade. Indeed, there are some among this vast multitude who never saw a pencil, nor would they know how to use one. Their motivation is other than me. Perhaps it is something like this. Each of these millions sees that he can thus exchange his tiny know-how for the goods and services he needs or wants. I may or may not be among these items. No mastermind. There is a fact still more astounding. The absence of a mastermind, of anyone dictating or forcibly directing these countless actions which bring me into being. No trace of such a person can be found. Instead, we find the invisible hand at work. This is the mystery to which I earlier referred. It has been said that only God can make a tree. Why do we agree with this? Isn't it because we realize that we ourselves could not make one? Indeed, can we even describe a tree? We cannot, except in superficial terms. We can say, for instance, that a certain molecular configuration manifests itself as a tree. But what mind is there among men that could even record, let alone direct, the constant changes in molecules that transpire in the lifespan of a tree? Such a feat is utterly unthinkable. I, Pencil, am a complex combination of miracles, a tree, zinc, copper, graphite, and so on. But to these miracles, which manifest themselves in nature, an even more extraordinary miracle has been added, the configuration of creative human energies. Millions of tiny know-hows configurating naturally and spontaneously in response to human necessity and desire and in the absence of any human masterminding. Since only God can make a tree, I insist that only God could make me. Man can no more direct these millions of know-hows to bring me into being than he can put molecules together to create a tree. The above is what I meant when writing. If you can become aware of the miraculousness which I symbolize, you can help save the freedom Mankind is so unhappily losing. For if one is aware that these know-hows will naturally, yes, automatically, arrange themselves into creative and productive patterns in response to human necessity and demand, that is, in the absence of governmental or any other coercive masterminding, then one will possess an absolutely essential ingredient for freedom, a faith in free men. Freedom is impossible without this faith. Once government has had a monopoly of a creative activity, such, for instance, as the delivery of the mails, most individuals will believe that the mails could not be efficiently delivered by men acting freely. And here's the reason. Each one acknowledges that he himself doesn't know how to do all the things incident to mail delivery. He also recognizes that no other individual could do it. These assumptions are correct. No individual possesses enough know-how to perform a nation's mail delivery any more than any individual possesses enough know-how to make a pencil. Now, in the absence of a faith in free men, in the unawareness that millions of tiny know-hows would naturally and miraculously form and cooperate to satisfy this necessity, the individual cannot help but reach the erroneous conclusion that mail can be delivered only by governmental masterminding. If I, pencil, were the only item that could offer testimony on what men can accomplish when free to try, and those with little faith would have a fair case. However, there is testimony galore. It's all about us and on every hand. 
Mail delivery is exceedingly simple when compared, for instance, to the making of an automobile or a calculating machine or grain combine or milling machine or to tens of thousands of other things. Delivery? Why, in this area where men have been left free to try, they deliver the human voice around the world in less than one second. They deliver an event visually and in motion to any person's home when it is happening. They deliver 150 passengers from Seattle to Baltimore in less than four hours. They deliver gas from Texas to one's range or furnace in New York at unbelievably low rates and without subsidy. They deliver each four pounds of oil from the Persian Gulf to our eastern seaboard halfway around the world for less money than the government charges for delivering a one-ounce letter across the street. The lesson I have to teach is this. Leave all creative energies uninhibited. Merely organize society to act in harmony with this lesson. Let society's legal apparatus remove all obstacles the best it can. Permit these creative know-hows freely to flow. Have faith that free men will respond to the invisible hand. This faith will be confirmed. I, pencil, seemingly simple though I am, offer the miracle of my creation as testimony that this is a practical faith, as practical as the sun, the rain, a cedar tree, the good earth.